Welcome back, everybody. Uh, we are here for hour two of our uh, live play of Pathfinder for Savage Worlds. We are, uh, just to kind of catch you up as to where we are, if you're just joining us, uh, our heroes have just been in a large combat with some terracotta-based constructs that look a little bit like wolves and uh, successfully uh, defeating the, the wolves that they found. They started hearing howling coming from the woods, sort of towards the town, which they then went to and were uh, sucked into a, uh, not literally, but because uh, <laughs> you got to point that out in fantasy games, um, a kindly half orc brought them into their their bar, their saloon, their tavern called the Goal Gull and Crossbones. Goal and Crossbones. And now we are about to do uh, what is called an interlude, which is a specific mechanic in Savage Worlds for kind of kind of for downtime type, types of things and and just sort of bridging gaps between scenes. And uh, so yeah, you you have these drinks and they're all perfect you uh, and plates of, of food of you know different cheeses and meats and breads and such are kind of put out across the bar in front of you and uh, and our, our half orc uh, bartender just kind of sits and looks at you for a moment and says so what brings you here then because all of these schmucks I already know and they all kind of like cheer back at her like, ah, oh, and she's like, yeah, shut up. Uh, <laughs> so, so what, what, what brings you here? Tell, tell me some stories. Uh, Zach, rather than tell a story, will um, pull out a small notebook and uh, a, a writing implement. And this is clearly a, a very weathered um, used book uh and uh he kind of peels it open and uh you know undoes the wrap around it and and pushes it open and shuffles through about 50 pages just chock full front and back of writing drawing um just notes of various arcana um bits and he starts um, kind of doodling what he saw, this terracotta construct wolf creature thing. And um, uh, he kind of starts writing like questions uh, of, you know, who created it? How, how did it get created? What, what's their purpose? And, and he just starts writing these things down um, kind of, kind of completely oblivious of everything that goes around him. He just kind of hyper concentrates on this one thing. Um, and to, to the, to the party, this is something that he does all the time. Uh, clearly after almost every encounter, every battle, he, he takes out this notebook and starts writing in it and, and, journaling essentially uh but he's he's constantly trying to work out the the flow of magic and and things that are kind of outside of his experience and so yeah he just he just completely zones out uh and and is not paying attention to really anybody so when she asks what's going on <laughs> tell me a story <laughs> he's just he just completely just like goes nose down into his books and starts and occasionally will drink. And when he takes a sip of this amazing drink, he just kind <clears> of, <throat> and then puts it back. <laughs> <laughs> it's high praise. And this is what Zoc tends to do in downtime, I assume. Yes. Nice. Okay. Um, and Sonny will kind of, uh, give my mate, he's, he's, uh, but focused on, focused on, uh, and he kind of peers over over Zach's shoulder. He's like a bit focused on the uh, the uh, dust up we had outside. No uh, intended. And she kind of looks over over the bar, which actually is pretty easy for her because she's quite tall. Tall, and she says, uh, "Dora." And she kind of knocks in front of you, Zach, and says, uh, "My name is Dora." For your when you have questions later. <clears throat> Uh, <laughs> I had a cousin like that. It's fine. 
Does he write down Dora? Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're so in the your book. Story? Fine. <laughs> uh, it's actually high praise from him. <laughs> yeah. Ple- pleasure to make your acquaintance, Dora. Be- before we get... Sorry. Um, no, go ahead, actually. Yeah, I was uh, wondering a bit more about... You said these things have been killing livestock around here. Right. Uh, well, so far, just kind of, well, just scaring the piss out of them, really. Um, uh, but, you know, s- stressing them out isn't any good. And we're afraid that it's going to just escalate eventually. I see. Destroyed a couple of wagons. Uh, barn was leveled, essentially, but we know that the... The wolves outside couldn't be the ones doing that. And she does keep saying wolves. Um, so whatever you've said about terracotta, she doesn't really seem to believe you on that one. Huh. Right. Uh, you uh, and if uh, you said this has been going on for a few weeks, yeah? Hmm. Yes. Um, I mean, it's great for business, but uh, it's not going to be, I don't know. I, I don't want the rumors of the Dolbys to get out before tourist season. Uh, <laughs> that Zoc kind of look, like looks up and is like, sorry, did you, did you say Dolbeast? <sighs> well, that's what they're calling it is the Dole Beast. I think we should call it. Oh, since you're writing it in your book, uh, we're going to call it the Sandpoint Devil because branding is really important in a tourist town. Sure. How, and do, you, how do you spell Dole Beast? <sighs> D-O-L-E or? D-O-H-L Beast. And, and he, writes, <laughs> he, he, writes, he writes it down, but if anybody like <laughs> looking over his shoulder, he clearly does not write D O L E in any language that anyone knows. Got it. Well, it's D O H L, right? Not D O L E. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, not a, it's not a uh, a cool, refreshing pineapple uh, treat. <laughs> <laughs> it's me. Could be, but it's not. You can only get it at Disneyland and select Vinci's. Yeah. <laughs> Is there any more the information on the, on this dull beast? Uh, no, we all stay inside like sane people. Mm. We, uh, you've heard it, right? There's all the wolves around at night. And then clearly this large, extra, big critter that's kind of in charge of them. Maybe the alpha sandpoint devil. And somebody mm. goes, dull beast. And she's like, Ugh, branding. <laughs> uh and uh, and she says, but you can hear him, it, her, whatever, outside every night. And I don't know about you. I don't run into run into something mm. not that big. Uh, not to uh, in kind of Sonny kind of while not looking up, sort of addresses the 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 or addresses the group. It's like not to uh, volunteer you for anything, lads. But um, would you be interested in? Possibly having a solution to your problem, Sagrick. Uh, you you can see as he's listening to just all of this. There, there's a certain amount, and, and those who he's traveled with would know. Like part of the vow that druids tend to make is to keep the balance between like nature and, and things. And the, this is creatures trying to essentially mock living creatures to to terrify this town so he's wondering a what what the reason behind this is he's getting kind of frustrated the more he hears about these creatures and all these things that they're doing to like destroy the town he's just like uh yeah you can see it on his face is what i'm saying to the rest of the party and and to that to what uh sunny just said he goes oh absolutely i think we should definitely do this and He's usually not the one to, to jump into saying, like, let's do this mission, but he's all in here. <laughs> oh, we'd be very grateful. You could probably get festival tickets for free. 
just so we You don't seem are... very excited about the festival <laughs> tickets, so we can negotiate some other price if you'd like. It's a good festival though. Just so we are are actually doing the interlude mechanic, just, uh, since we are demonstrating it for the audience, um, I think that while they're having this conversation that's about like the actual quest and stuff like that, Thasmin is nowhere near this conversation, and she is somewhere in the corner, and she's regaling with a tale of her ev everyone she knows trapped in a net, hovering above a, a, a troll campfire. And, oh, and how, no. with just the skin of their teeth, uh, the, the young halflings of her caravan were able to squeeze out of it. And she's like, it's like, if you've never felt the thrill and the, the, the fear of dangling above the very earth itself, I don't recommend it. It's not for the faint of heart. And then, like, so she's doing that in the background while that's happening. And there's so. just a group of people who are like, holy crap, and, like, filling up your beverage again with kind of whatever they have right there. There's a pitcher on the table. And they're just like, that sounds that sounds so scary. And she's like, I'm and so then, glad I'm a farmer. Well, we lived off the land, too. But you take the wrong turn on the wrong mountain overpass, and next thing you know, the trolls have you. So be careful. <laughs> They're all just <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she talk, talks a lot enchanted. of enchanted over the ground, and I because her she has a hindrance of a phobia of heights, and so <gasps> she's describing like right. why she has this. She's she's leaving out the details of this is how her family died, and she's yeah. just talking about it. Like it's like she's doing the thing where she's numbing herself from the pain of what actually happen by treating it like it's this exciting fantastic story and she's leaving out very painful details yeah nice job i know i know we want to like keep the momentum going for the story but i know sure. you wanted to set we want yeah. both things yeah that's fine. Yeah. yeah and i think it makes sense that thasmin is not talking business like while the rest of them are i think like <laughs> she's like and i think she might walk over once we've agreed to do this mission and she'd be like so uh just out of this thought um is there like a compensation package? Is there any sort of like prize for saving the festival and the town, of course? But I know you're very excited about this glass blowing festival. So, would well, you... I mean, you can certainly attend it for free. And we love you it. seem very, it's just like, none and, of you and, seem and, very excited about that. And well, Sunny looks up, and we'd love to, but to, uh, it's great to, uh, put a fine point on my compatriots, uh, um, uh, concerns about compensation. We have been traveling a while, and our trade is problem solving, uh, such with issues such as these. So <laughs> maybe, the, maybe the precise negotiations can wait until uh, wait until later. But we would expect to uh, have a bit more payment aside from uh, attendance at your lovely. And I'm sure wondrous glass blowing festival. I'm a bartender. Well, mm. this is a good example. See, if somebody came in here and sure. was like, wow, I'm very, very thirsty, and right. then they asked you for a beer, you wouldn't right. just be like, well, out of the goodness of my heart, I'm giving you a beer. You would, of course, expect them to compensate you for that. Uh -huh. And so we're just saying, like, we happen to be uh, a row. We, we happen to be problem solvers, like my friend here has expressed. Uh, my friend Sonny has has gleefully described us as. And so you are telling us there's a problem, and we're offering to solve it. Awesome. And so we're basically serving you a beer, and now we're asking you what the gold pieces are for that <laughs> well, beer. To to uh to ease the ease the uh, tension mayhaps if tension? <laughs> mayhaps if you are simply a bartender uh if there is someone who might who might uh who might compensate us for solving this town's problems perhaps you could point us to them like a mayor like a dog who makes decisions it's not, it wouldn't <laughs> and be the I first think time at this moment <laughs> dora and zock share a look <laughs> <laughs> That's a little. Now I know why you're so kind grumpy. Kind of on the same page. <laughs> now I know and, why you're so grumpy. And, and and yeah, but at that moment, at he, he he shares that look, 
And then he looks back down at his book and flips about 20 pages and then holds up a picture of a dog in a mayor, like with a mayor <laughs> sash. <laughs> oh, it, oh. it happened. Oh, uh, nice, nice okay. dog. To be fair. He, he was a very good boy. <laughs> I hope so. Uh, I hope <laughs> he was the best boy in town. Uh, I could... I, I can talk to the mayor, but all I have to offer you tonight is I, I could give you free board for the night. I don't. At least for tonight. That'll do for now, I think. Yeah. Okay. And. Uh, yeah. Um, and actually, I'm going to kind of um, for back for my interlude with backstory. Um, Sonny's actually going to slide another. Uh, another like coin across the bar. Um, and last time we were in a bar like this, I ha- and I had to uh, have us be to hasty retreat due to uh, being recognized uh, uh, for uh, some past indiscretions. If uh, all the same to you and on the honor of that coin, I would uh, appreciate it if uh, if you kept my if you kept my uh, Explicit identity, a bit of a bit under your lovely hat. Uh, uh, I was a privateer. I get it. And he winks. And yeah, they, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to note that in their, at their last bar, they actually got chased out because someone recognized him as a Jarl Slayer. (laughs) And that is a problem for you sometimes. Yes. Mm-hmm. People are so mad whenever you slay their yarls. <laughs> At least it wasn't that one good boy. Yeah. Mayor. But I would never. A bad boy. No, he was, he was great. <laughs> he had been a bad dog. <laughs> yeah. um, and I think I think Phasmin will also kind of like lean in to Dora and go, and by the way. You're not just a bartender. You are a purveyor of spirits and delights and community. And you should remember that. Well, drinks are on me. (laughs) And uh, makes you a new drink that is somehow even better. Uh, And kind of tastes a little bit like home, but not in the sad way. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> Look at all your faces. You're like, I do have hope in a sad way, though. <laughs> I know. I've read your backstory. <laughs> <laughs> home is the one thing I literally don't have. <laughs> yeah. But this is this is like a taste of that good memory that you still I, have. I think it's kind of like a spiced, um, like a hot, like almost like like a spiced cider. And I think mm. it reminds her of the like fall harvest season, like when they yeah. were starting to like pack away things for the winter travels and they would kind of like have a few things that like they would kind of do like a fall festival when they were harvesting like things they had found the road and stuff like that before the caravan before packing it up and i think it's a good warm memory nice so uh so i have uh your rooms ready upstairs and she had gone kind of back and forth and sent somebody up and uh and she says so you're welcome to stay out or retire you're gonna find all of these idiots uh here in the morning waking up uh because we don't we don't leave once we're here do we and everybody's like no and she's like yeah so it'd be really great if you'd solve this problem for me yeah I'll, i will talk to the mayor but uh they do tend to stay in town so i would just start looking in town in the morning though don't don't leave tonight uh be a free room why will we leave it's not safe yeah, Selgrick is going to take his leave to the room. Uh, what you see is him just sort of, like I said, uh, so so just to be clear, my uh, interlude and card specifically is talking about being brooding about something. And I think this nature abomination creature thing uh, happening is what is bothering him and making him really frustrated. And so he yeah. just goes up to the room and stares out of the window for quite some time as he's looking out for any shadowy figures, but uh, thinking about, like, this c- creature, not creature thing. <laughs> mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. And, um, so Greg, uh, or, uh, right after So Greg um, uh, gets up to leave, Zuck slams his book closed, 
pushes the ale uh, out away from him and then um, uh, gets up and just starts walking away, but just like throws up his hands, uh, throws up, a, throws up a finger and just kind of calls back to Thasman and Sonny and hopefully loud enough so that Silgret can, can still hear before he's completely in his room. And it's just, so, <laughs> and just says, uh, I'm going to go take a bath, dirty clothes in front of my door by midnight. If you want them clean in the morning. <laughs> you're, you're a gem, Zark. An absolute gem. It's like pop a bear at the party. <laughs> I think I think if we're if we're gonna be like fading out of the, the night and going to the next morning, I think to that response, Thasman's like, all right, who wants to get me out of my clothes by midnight? <laughs> <laughs> and like the table of people there have been like oh oh yeah hands all around raised hands and scene and yeah. scene yeah that's a button not yeah. as a, not as a thing right. that we'll play as a, yeah. as a, as a, as a cup to black nice all right so we wake up um, we have a nice night of sleep oh was there well, a yeah I, I did actually um before we like fade out completely uh, at some point in the evening Sonny will like head by Sogrick's, um, like, uh, Sogrick's room and just kind of knock on the door. Mm -hmm. Yes. What's on your mind, mate? You looked a little, uh, a little south in the jaw. Oh, uh, you know, just weird, not wool, claymation creature things running around, causing trouble, making people think that nature is out to, to attack them, and this is why people go out and attack wild animals in, in other cities, right? My job is to stop stuff like that. I, I, I want to make sure that nature is seen as this beautiful thing that people revere and love, and this is something that we will stop. So I'm just angry about that. I get the impulse. Uh, it's, uh, it's a bit trying to... Uh... Have things misrepresented. Uh, exactly. People, people take something good and something pure and pervert it to their own end. Mm. I, I can, I can definitely, I can definitely understand your anger, but I want to make sure that when we deal with this, mm -hmm. you want uh, you don't let that anger distract you. Uh, I pride myself on trying to be the level head in our group at times. And for some reason, this seems to be bothering me a lot. Um, so I came to you, mate. Yeah. You're, you're the only, you're the frequently, you're the only one of us that has his head on straight. You're right. I need not lose myself in this. Uh, thank you. Friend. I needed that. No problem. If you ever need a shoulder to lean to lean on, yeah? Mm-hmm. And before you go, Sonny, I hope you know you can always count on me as well. I know there are times where the past seems to keep up with you a bit too much. If you ever need a near, I'm here. Appreciate that. One thing I uh, one thing I've always tried to make sure that none of my uh, none of my bad winds blow back on any of you. If it does, it's water off a duck's back. <laughs> at, at, at that, you hear a string of expletives come from Zark's room, <laughs> and a lot of running water. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. I love it. And night <laughs> falls upon the party. <laughs> it's lovely. I love that. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, we, next day you wake up, you slept fairly well. Uh, the, rest, the rest of them may have. <laughs> your, night, your night was exactly the night you wished. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I think in the morning, Phasman has 
going downstairs to get coffee for everybody. And it's like, especially like made sure everyone's coffee is the way they like it and stuff like that. Like she's, I think especially whatever Zoc would drink in the morning, she's made it because she knows she kind of was being ornery with him the night before. I think she is like making sure she's making it up to him by like making sure he's taken care of. And she's gotten like breakfast and stuff for everybody as well. I love the idea that that's kind of the natural cycle of this party is that you start the mornings <laughs> nice, <laughs> increasingly grumpy, and then the next morning you're like, I really should make the coffee the way I like it. I think she woke up in a pretty good mood for reasons, and she's yes. like, I'm going to make sure Ross is in a good mood too. Yes. <laughs> nice. And, and you all, as you open up the door to your room, there's a neatly folded pile of clothes, like, waiting and ready and waiting for you. I awesome. love it. So yeah, so you you get dressed and you're oh so clean. Let's just all take a moment and think about how much we don't smell like the road. It's brilliant. And you have a nice breakfast. Uh and you you know you can see some of the other patrons having a nice breakfast but a pretty hungover breakfast as well and, and they they begin to kind of schlep themselves out of the out of the tavern uh, to get about their business for the day. And uh, you begin your mm. uh, discovery of the town. So uh, Sandpoint is, is growing. This isn't nearly all of it, but this is, you know, the, the section that you're in uh, and it does tend to sprawl and spread. Uh, and um, you can, <laughs> I can see your icons going across, which is adorable. Uh, they're like little <laughs> tiny versions of everything. It's great. I'm a big fan of their motorized truck activity they have. <laughs> <laughs> That's a carriage, and we're going to call it a carriage. Uh, it's a sport utility carriage. It is. It's a sport utility carriage. It's, it's uh, two horse, got two horsepower. It's like drawn I just by two wasn't horses. willing to, to ask. <laughs> AI for an image yet. Um, okay, so you can see your characters on there, um, and they're really just on there for the purposes of you're exploring the village. So yeah. we're still in kind of a theater of the mind place. And I'm assuming that our goal here today is to kind of find out as much as we can about where this is taking place and what the heck is going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're going to run this as a quick encounter to kind of find evidence and lead us to where we need to go. And a quick encounter in Savage Pathfinder is pretty casual. You only need more successes than you have players. Or, sorry, you need at least the number of successes that you have players. So if you only end up with three successes, it fails. But you will not. I mean, that would be... We'll fix it. <laughs> <laughs> Put it that, way. that would be statistically anomalous, uh, but it could happen, but it probably won't. Um, but you also, it's much more about narration and how you're doing things. And so it is a little bit up to the GM's discretion. So if you're trying to do something as your character and it's kind of integral, then it becomes up to the GM to let that kind of failure happen, but then find a way to still get you into the next location because you need to be there. <laughs> So uh, I want you to be there. You want to be there. We're working together. So for a quick encounter to kind of search this town and figure out where things are, all you have to do is find a uh, skill that you want to use. Um, tell me what you're doing and how you're doing it. We can figure it out together. Um, but what are you doing in order to find like whatever kind of information you want or where you're looking or how you're looking and then you'll roll that skill and then we'll, we'll kind of count the number of successes that way. Okay. And this can be in any order. We don't need cards for this or anything. Okay. Very quick way of kind of narrating the search, which does uh, not start at the SUV. I would like to, <laughs> <laughs> I would like to uh, do a notice roll if possible on sure. the tracks of these creatures to see where they're sort of coming from, especially the ones like, where we had our fight, our tussle the night before. Okay. Um, just because. Do you have, okay, so do you have notice? Do you, I know I you have, have notice. notice. That is, yes, everybody has to have notice. Um, so <laughs> standard in Savage Worlds. Um, do you have survival or tracking? I do have survival, yes. <gasps> survival okay. would be better if okay. you can. Yep. Let's do survival. 
Let's, let's try. That's one success. Cool. Yeah, I'm just trying to see where where they originated from. Did they pop up out of the ground? Like what? <laughs> what? Are, how are these things moving around? <laughs> Perfect. It, yep. And you can see that there are, especially in the area you were, that it, it's like the ground is kind of torn up because they are, they're running on it, but they're stone, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. uh, so they're not like the soft pads or anything like that. They're, they're definitely tearing up the turf and that kind of a thing. And it looks like they are kind of as packs of constructs surrounding different buildings and different groups of buildings. Uh, mm -hmm. And you can imagine that at night, that's probably quite terrifying if you're locked in your house and, you know, you can hear the howls and you can see the shapes. Um, I have like, given that they're like, they seem to be taking like very, def like very like um, defined formations, like, like, they like there seems to be some strategy some like tactic like some tactical acumen at work i want to use battle to see if <sighs> i can kind of recognize if i can recognize like a pattern that is very that is like coming from somebody like I if i could love that yes that's a great use of battle outside of large scale yeah and let's see should I just go ahead and roll? You're going to go ahead and roll. And that's a success. Doing great so far. And they do seem oddly, like you can tell, you know how many you took down last night. And so you can kind of, as you're working with Sogrek as well, uh, you can kind of tell that there's probably the same number in sort of each pack close to it. Uh, and they are, there's the, the tracks do seem to like each one is on its own track. You can't really tell where they're coming from yet, mm -hmm. but they're not weaving in and out. It's very much like this one goes around this house and over here, you know, like, um, train cars on a railroad track. Could I like could I make a, a, a an educated guess that that something or someone is is sort of ordering these steps or yes. I'm gonna use are you are you done, Sonny? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. oh, I'm sorry before I cut you off. I'm gonna use performance as my skill and what i'm doing is the other half of what i was laying groundwork for last night which is like i was spending last night being charming and gregarious and this like famed storyteller of, of myth and legend and things like that and now i'm finding i'm going i'm going to heading into the town i'm going to find a shop and look for somebody who was one of the people who was regaled by me at the bar last night mm -hmm. and i'm going to convince them that i am working on a what's the name of this town again this is sandpoint standpoint i'm i'm telling someone that i'm looking to to create an epic of the tale of the sandpoint devil and how i would like to get all the information that i can possibly get to make sure that i'm given the legend that's due it's due performance oh. and you know i want nice. to make this exciting tale of it as well and so what i'm actually looking to find out from everybody is kind of like when the attacks started happening, uh -huh. if it feels like there's a pattern to the attacks, if it feels like there are certain like targets that have been specific, like if, if it feels like there's actually been like a plan involved as opposed to just like random attacks to scare people, like I'm, I'm basically looking for some sort of design element sure. to it. And I'm, but I'm doing it all under the guise of, well, of course I need to know all that I can about the Sandpoint Devil if I'm going to tell the tale and, and let people know about the legend and the excitement they can find in your city. Yes, and, and the girl who runs this shop is very much like, oh, please let me help you. Yes, because <laughs> you told such great stories last night and yeah. I'm so glad that you're here. And do you want, you know, she has like some, some I don't know, uh, taffy or something that she's made. She's like, here, have this. And do you and have, she's, you this know, is a strange question. Do you have bath bombs? Of course. What is, what do you think? Zoth's We're in civilization. 
Zoc, what is a scent or a, a thing that, that she might know you like, even if you wouldn't tell her directly that you like it? Oh, I would never tell her, but blueberry no. blueberry lavender is probably Zoc's. Okay, she yeah. buys a blueberry <laughs> lavender bath bomb. She does thing ever. Uh, like a bath salt. <laughs> Yeah. Thing. Um, and then so she's also using that as like a way of like oiling up the story. So I yeah, love it. So I'll go ahead and make that roll. Yeah. Make it at a plus two because you oh. set that. No, we can just calculate that in our brains. OK. Uh, but uh, so it's a seven you, with it's a plus a seven two. with the. Pl- yeah. yeah. So that's still it's it's a success. So that's still just one success. But yeah, you set that up really nicely last night. So well done on that. Um, excellent. Yeah. And she's, um, as she's kind of arranging bath bombs and she gets, you know, the one that you asked for. And then she's like, how about this one for you though? And she kind of has you smell it. And, uh, she's like, it's kind of my favorite. It's like a honeysuckle. And, uh, and, and as she's kind of talking you through that and, and charming you in her own way, uh, she's, you get the impression that it does seem to happen more often kind of in the middle of town. Um, and so like the, the biggest concentration tends to be in, in kind of the most populated and kind of wealthy area. Okay. So I'll, I'll take that information and I'll take, I'll take the bath palm that I bought and I'll take the one that, that Has she gives gifted. me and, yeah. I, and I'll say to her, like, well, if it's your favorite and then I'll wink as I like lead, head out the door <laughs> with it. Flushes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, and I think I will. I think I will surreptitiously set the bath bomb that I bought for for Zuck, uh, like at your door, like the same way you did with our laundry. Like I'm putting it back for you. Like it's like your payment for doing the laundry, and like also it's like nice. a peace offering. Nice, nice. Well, you tell me which which of his many skills <laughs> <laughs> he should he should use for this. But he uh, so. He's going to uh, try to do a little bit of Columbo work. Uh, um, and he's he's honestly more of a Rockford guy, but he um, <laughs> he's going to go around and try to get um, it get information. But he's also going back through his book and seeing if he's got any sort of and, and possibly using uh a cult or, or something to determine like the nature of the magic that, that was used. Um, uh, and, and just try and suss out like what, what's the, uh, antithesis to this, you know, if, if this is, uh, some sort of, you know, evocation magic is, can he, is there something that can be opposite it? Is the dull beast, is the Sandpoint Devil a reference he knows? Things like that. I love it. That's a cult. <laughs> a cult. Okay, great. A cult, for sure. Oh, come on. No, Zoc. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No, that's, 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 a, Benny. that's a Benny. It's upsetting. There we go. There we are. There we go. Okay. Oh, man. It, one away. It's okay. Me. That's four. You have four. <laughs> it's perfect. You needed yeah. that. Uh, and so, yeah, and it's, that's perfect because as you're, as you're working together, uh, and charming people and also trying to find, you know, you've, we've kind of found where the, the tracks kind of start from and move around, but then now we're sort of in the middle of town when we've narrowed it there. And that Zoc is when you notice the scorch marks in the town like uh, cobblestone. Hmm. Uh, and as you look more closely at the scorch marks, you realize that they look like hooves and they're large. And you all begin to follow them. I'm assuming. <laughs> okay. No, we run away. Um, <laughs> nope, I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> uh, no, I don't know what you were thinking. I don't know why we said yes to this. Thank you all for yeah. watching our game. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I can pivot. We can do that. Um, so you you begin to follow them, and it's starting to dawn on you that this is maybe some kind of infernal magic. Uh, and something has been summoned but that doesn't seem to be the same thing as the constructs that you saw last night. Mm. Um, and you follow them to this house. And hopefully on your screen, you see a house. Uh, I can see that you're bopping around on there. That's so cute. Uh, 
That's honestly my favorite thing. And I have already set you up on the outside of the house where you are seeing these tracks. Okay. And I've not hidden any of the inside of the house from you because that is not the most important part of this right now. Uh, so you can see the tracks and the tracks do appear to be moving away from the house. Mm. And they are scorched into the stone. Hmm. All right. So I think that there is some kind of infernal magic that uh, is creating this. I don't know what. It's clearly large. And uh, uh, I don't know if there's any sort of connection between this and the, the terracotta, but uh, it's um, a pretty intense. But she did say there's a sandpoint devil, so maybe maybe this devil is. Does anyone actually know what a dole dole beast is? Because this could is a dole beast demonic in nature. Beast. Would it be something that we? What can we roll something to try to? Figure if that you out? have a cult, you or. Yeah. Uh, I do not. That's why in character she's yeah. saying. Does what this thing is because it's yeah. could be connected. We called it. It's going to be. It's going to need to be a, a a pretty good occult role. I'll just go ahead and put that out there. I'll yeah. I'll give it a shot. Yeah. So, um, I've looked through my book and I haven't seen anything like it. Hmm. But uh, the the knowledge that it's a sandpoint devil. I mean, lots of things are called the devil, but uh, there's. They're rarely ever actually infernal, so. Fair. I just seem like a coincidence that might be worth looking into. And also, uh, <laughs> the uh, to to note the movements of those those uh, those beasts from before. They're tactical. Hmm. Someone of some someone of some degree of higher intelligence is is ordering their steps. We may be, we may be dealing with a proper devil, or we may be dealing with someone who can play the part well enough. Yeah. Well, they're definitely targeting specific, like nicer parts of town. So there definitely seems to be motivation and a, a point behind it. It's not just it's like someone's not just trying to disrupt the town. Someone's actually looking for someone to go after. Mm -hmm. Was there a pattern? of where the the creatures and stuff were what what buildings they were around or just just around random buildings uh the it seems more highly concentrated in this kind of wealthier center of town uh, right 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 um but it's uh and you can almost <laughs> That's my cat. There's an outdoor cat <laughs> that stops by for snuggles and uh <laughs> <laughs> and Zach may, so or may not pet it. It's, it's because <laughs> it's because I went out during our break and got a snack, and now he's like, "Oh, I get snack too, right?" He's yeah, just totally fine and sleep before this, so it's my fault. I bet. I bet though that that Sogrek goes out uh, out town and feeds random animals, uh, and they all start following him, <laughs> and they come, and the, now they're here, and Zach is just so like, <laughs> "Why snacks?" Um, hey, why? Hey, Sugrek, we were trying to be stealthy, so you uh, pie pipering isn't actually the best call <laughs> for that. Particular. It's I, I I've told them to 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 let us rest when we're in towns. Uh, sorry, they they tend to just you know congregate wherever I go. <laughs> it's just this little gray one that's just like I love you, I love. You. And I'm like, ah, yeah. oh, but you can't get mad at him. And, yeah. and there's like, there's, there's like, a, there's an orange woman that's like, I love you, don't touch, don't touch, don't touch, don't touch. Don't Thank touch. you. Oh, <laughs> uh, so this what wall, would we do? Sorry. Go ahead. No, there's a scorch mark on the wall, right? And then is that where these tracks are coming out of? There's a scorch mark. There are these tracks. Mm -hmm. These tracks are scorched into the stone that you're standing on. Right. Do they look like... I'm wondering if there was, like, residue of a portal or something that these tracks seem to be, like, moving away from. That's a great question. You do not see anything that looks like that. 
Okay. All you see is a two-story house. Can we ascertain what kind of building this is specifically? It's like a two-story <laughs> um, cottage, but it's it's very well appointed and uh, it's it looks very well kept. Uh, it's definitely, but it's definitely a house. It's somebody's home residentially. Don't want to spring this all, all on you, but if nobody minds, I think I'm, I'm think I'm going to make an in- inquiry of the uh, the homeowners. You think it's smart? I mean, maybe you might as well. I mean, we need we need something and. For all, for all I can see, this is where the trail either starts or ends. If you want, I can talk to him. Uh, uh, I, it's not sunny. It's I'm not yours. sure that's the smarter of the not smart options. Um, <laughs> if you... If you think you could distract them, I could probably slip in and take a look around. But we don't know how many people are in there, so you know that could be an issue. Real, real quick, because I like that idea. But real quick, I want to ascertain the the tracks. Do the tracks look like this creature was in motion? Yes. Okay. So it looks like they were. It, it almost looks like they passed through this wall somehow. Ostensibly. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, well, I mean, if you look at the tracks, it looks like they're they're moving, but there's not. I don't sense anything coming from that. Well, hold on, and he puts his hand out, and he's gonna cast detect Arcana. Do it. That's terrible. Do it again. That's better. Mm -hmm. Uh, The tracks become hot uh, and begin to glow uh, as if they're like blacksmithing kind of glow. Um, They get, they get quite hot and uh, you can sense something inside the house that is also giving off some kind of, wave feeling of, of magic. It's quite strong. Um, that, there is something coming from, from the house. Whoever is in there, there's some serious magic happening around here. If they don't know who it is, then it, it's, it would be very hard to not know. And, and, did we get our PowerPoints back overnight? Yeah? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe not Thasman. But <laughs> I don't <know>. <laughs> <laughs> I power through There's something. all kinds of ways to get PowerPoints. I don't think I have PowerPoints Look. anyway. I don't think I have, I don't think I have powers. So. Relaxation. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I'm happy to try to sneak inside, but uh, if this is a house of people who know how to summon devils, uh, I don't know if I want to be caught alone in there. So... I don't know what your thoughts are on that. Hmm. Well, if you if you need if you need a partner, I w- I was gonna elect to do the talking, but if you need a partner, I'd be happy to be at your side. I mean, I, I out of character. How how sneaky has Sonny been known to be in the past? Uh, let, let, let me just make doubly sure, but I think, I think reasonably sneaky, not like, yeah, he's got, like, as, to, to put the ta- tiger on the table and yell at it, he's got a D6 in stealth. Okay. So, reasonably, reasonably sneaky. sneaky. Yeah. Okay. Because I, I think it's like fair to be like, oh, is this person going to help me or is this person going to have heavy armor It's going to shake around and cause noise while <laughs> yeah. we're walking around the house? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I do think you're the best talker, besides me, of course, but, um, I think that I think that Zach and I both probably would irritate them. So I don't know if we want to be the ones to do it. So speak for yourself, Fussy. 
Okay. <laughs> I mean, okay. I think I, well, I could handle it just fine. Well, this is the thing. If you want to give it a try, you can. <laughs> we may, uh, if He's we're just looking arrogant. to distract them, <laughs> if, we, if we're looking to distract them, and he leans in closer to Thasman, we may want to irritate them. You get me? I do get you. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> So, and Zot came. Zot what are you came, talking he, about? <laughs> we were just we were just talking about how persuasive you can be, mate. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I'm just shaking my head. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you're about to weaponize Zot. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be there to to uh, as emotional support. And I'm... <laughs> Thanks, love. <laughs> he gives you a, a, a little a side, like, sort of smile. <laughs> and then goes, all right, Zock, it's time to show those amazing people skills. Great. All right. R- remember, I'm doing the talking. <laughs> all right. <laughs> and then Zock, like, gets his stuff together. <clears throat> Pulls on his gloves. Let's do this. <laughs> and he goes <laughs> and he knocks. Up, he he raps on the door, you know, really heavily, and then kind of looks around to see that Thasman and Sunny have are on their way. All right. <laughs> so Thasman and Sunny, you should go ahead and make stealth stealth rolls for me, please. Okay. Okay. Just so I know where we stand. I'm gonna I'm gonna spend a Benny to try to do a little, a little better. I am too, Jesus. <laughs> yikes on yikes on bikes. Hang on. I did okay. I just I wanna Oh no, that's worse. That's worse. <laughs> Not a crit okay, fail. Yeah, Not a crit fail. You yeah, you, you get to keep the highest. Okay. Yeah, I'll I'll keep the good one then. Yeah. yeah let me um, do that. Good Oof. God. Oof. Uh, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try one more time and then put this to bed. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes it's just not meant to be. <laughs> that would be great, though. Yeah, like, I'm actually yeah. kind of okay at stealthing. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> not so very <laughs> base. Oh, yeah. No. Okay. okay. Yeah. This is just. I, I think. I think Stasman turns around and goes, "I got this. Why don't you go help out, Zon?" <laughs> <laughs> I think. I think like there's probably a window that she's like shimmying through, and you keep like it keeps like squeaking every time you try to touch it, and like she gets kind of, she keeps stopping it with her hand before it gets too loud, and then she finally just like looks at the window and goes. I'm good. You can get the help. <laughs> Zuck, Zuck it like knocks on the door a little bit, and then he hears all this commotion like around the side. And then as he's hearing it, he's like banging on the door. <laughs> Both like hands. That. So, Amy, I don't know where the windows would be, but I'm assuming she's trying to go into one of these two rooms here with the checkered floors. Okay. Well, you could also shimmy up to the second floor if you want. Oh, she certainly wouldn't. <laughs> I'm just nope. giving you the opportunity. Yep. She has a phobia of heights, so I don't I think know. she will <laughs> So I invite you to... <laughs> I think, well, if I did that, I'd have to roll again with a, a, a negative modifier because of the height. So I think she's going to stay downstairs. Okay. That's fair. Um, and so... Or, uh, alternately, like, um, I, like, we could say that, like, I'm, like, I'm, like, with my failure on the stealth roll, I've actually, like, in an effort to cover more ground, we separated and I took the high road knowing that Thasman has a phobia of heights and I'm making noise up high while Thasman is being stealthy down low. <laughs> so shimmying up the side, but not stealthy. Yeah. I yeah. like it. I like it. All right. So uh... <laughs> she goes in, she goes in the kitchen or whatever the room is. She just hears like a like the creak of the pipe as you're trying to go up it. And she's like, oh, this is why I didn't want him to do this. <laughs> Um, so yeah, Zach, you, you bang on the door and this, I'm just going to go ahead and, and move the token. So you know which one I'm talking about. Um, this tiny woman, tiny ancient woman answers the door. Uh, and she is maybe she's shorter than you, 
Zoc, but she's not quite as short as Thasman. Um, and she could be 80 or 110. <laughs> so um, she's got a little cane and she says, Oh, hello. Old woman. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you could tell me. There's a great magic coming from this place, and I'm curious to know who here has great magic. And you have to tell me. You have to, because I came here knocking, so, you know, it's just common courtesy to tell someone. I'm not a cop. I'd tell you if I was a cop, but I'm not one. As he, he says that, I'm, you would, you I really want to wa you. I wanna watch her reaction very carefully. Okay. Like, um, for... Like especially with mention of magic and seeing okay. how she responds to it. All right, please make a notice roll. I wasn't expecting it right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool. Uh, notice. Let's go. Ba -ba -ba. Nope. I'm gonna. Oh wait, no. A five yeah. is fine. A yeah. five is fine. <laughs> is it? Do you want to stay with that? I'm oh. gonna try to reroll it. Okay. Here you go. I mean, technically, it's a success. <laughs> yeah, Shenanigans. I mean, now, now, now I'm like, <laughs> you're in it. You're in it now. Yeah, uh, leading the, uh, leading the nope. I don't appreciate uh, it. <laughs> like, I, I, I've got another bitty to spend. Oh, <laughs> big spender, big spender. Uh, the GM got me this time. You Let's guys. Ace it. Let's ace it. Yes, there it is. Yes, nine. That's pretty good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she seems totally fine. <laughs> uh, she seems totally fine. <laughs> <laughs> there is a role that I made behind screen. Uh, so, uh, cause I needed to know a thing. Um, and, and she just, she looks at, uh, she looks at, uh, Zog and, and she looks at you, Sagra, and she looks at the sweet gray kitty that's just like, I love you, I love you. And uh, she says, oh, I, I wouldn't know anything about magic, but uh, um, I just work for Mr. Morgan. He might know something. Would you like to come in? Yeah, I would. And he like... Kind of pushes his way past her and just. Oh, and she almost topples over because uh, she's on a cane and she I might hope, be 110. I, I hope <laughs> I'm sorry and she's about like, my oh, oh, I say, oh, it's it's fine. Uh, you know, he's 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 quite young and and almost charming in a way. Uh, mm -hmm. You'll find Mr. Morgan in the in the parlor just there if you would like to go through. I'll bring some refreshments for you. Mm. I, I I think I'll be fine. Uh, we we ate breakfast this morning. I, I I'm I'm I don't need a refreshment, but maybe I, I look at uh, my friend who's probably way ahead of me now. Yeah. <laughs> and I go, <laughs> yeah, none just, for me, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and so you uh, enter that room, uh, and you do see uh, a gentleman, uh, human, tall, um, in a very nice suit sitting uh, and reading, going through some papers. I said, oh, uh, I see that Mother Kilcarney let you in. Do you, we have business? Oh, yes. We have business, Mr. Morgan. I don't know what kind of shenanigans you're doing around here, but this, the, the magic that's emanating from this house is dangerous. I don't know if you know that. And if you don't know that, you know it now. And I don't think that it's really, you know, proper for, to, to, for you to be, you know, casting magic in a, in a place where there's, you know, people around. And I don't know what your, what your game is or what you're trying to do, but I don't think that it's very smart. I'm uh, a historian. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> you're what now? I, I <clears throat> I'm a historian. That's I'm reading history books. I I lecture history. That's and he hands you a book and it's like the history of something incredibly boring from an, another place that I can't think of right now. That's a long title. <laughs> mm. It is. Yep. <clears throat> I see. Um, hmm. Uh, well, there's nobody doing any magic in the house. 
Uh, and um, the old woman who is uh, who opened the door. She's she's not doing me any magic either. I I suppose. No, that's Mother Kilkarney. She's been with us. She raised me, uh, and she watches over the boy now, especially that his mother is gone from us. The boy. Uh, uh, sorry, we're new in town. No, you, you guys are taking care of a boy here? Your son? I have or? a son. Ah. I see. <clears throat> Mr. Morgan, have you spoken to your son about and doing you breakfast? are... My name is Doc Modo. Mr. Modo? And your friend? Sagrik. Uh, sorry for... And there's a little black cat that uh, <laughs> that's now joined. <laughs> uh, uh-huh. Mr. Morgan, have you spoken to your boy about uh, reckless magic? Thomas is seven. Oh, that's a, a perfect oh, age. Oh, sorry, he did, he did just turn eight. And what? Mother Kilcarney comes in with a tray. And she's, like, kind of, like, she's shake, it's shaking. You can hear the china cups rattling. And she's got tea, whether you want it or not. <laughs> <laughs> and she brings it in. Uh, and she says, he's nine, Mr. Morgan. Mm-hmm. He's nine this year. And he says, oh, that's right. They grow up so fast. They do. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Uh, do you know where your kids are right now? He's upstairs in his room. Uh, call the lad down. I just sent him to his room. No. Well, I, I don't... I don't mean to tell you, Mr. Morgan, but uh, magic in these types of houses, especially this close to a town center, are usually not uh, the type of thing that you'd like to have here in this town. And... And he, 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 Zach just continues to just kind of berate this man and, uh-huh. and try yeah. to to try to get him to call. I'm gonna, his I'm son gonna step down. in, and I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be like, uh, I'm so sorry, Mr. Morgan. <laughs> Even if my friend is a bit enthusiastic about assuming that you are using magic here, yeah. that may not be the case. We understand. What could be happening though is that maybe. Your son has friends, or someone has done something, but have you seen that mark on the side of your house? That is indeed a strange thing. And so we would just like to talk with your son for a moment to see if he's seen anything, potentially, that might help us. uh, I don't know what marks you're talking about, but there's... Oh, there's an entire sketch mark on the side of your house. Well, everybody's scared of these wolves or whatever at night, and it just, I, I don't think it's that... It's probably so, just some dirt. I'll get Mother Kilcarney to clean it up. She's like, oh, yes, sir. Yes, it's, sir. Uh, it's she tobbles her way out of the room. <laughs> Tell me, you're a historian. Tell me about mm-hmm. the Sandpoint Devil. <laughs> it's local legend. So, it's... Greg, I'll, I'll, I'll thank you to take the cat outside. <laughs> 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 I'll try. <laughs> Uh, it's it's people who don't know any better than to make things up. Just a bunch of wolves. Right. So, someone... I, I am a man of science and history. Uh, my wife, similarly, she was a lore master. Uh, she kind of did the traveling and gathering of knowledge, and I study it and lecture about it and... Can I have books on the wall? I, I assume most of our history, but I'm, I'm looking specifically for anything that could be slightly magical. You don't even need to make a notice roll. They are history books. They are uh, kind of anthropology style books as well. You can see that it was a collection of two scholars who had gotten married. <laughs> so. Nice. Mm-hmm. Um. But if you're just dead set on talking to the boy, just go upstairs. But I'm not calling him down. I just sent him up because he and his dog were playing far too loudly down here. Mm. Mm. I see. 
Mr. Morgan. Uh, Mr. Mordo. 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 Just, just Mordo, not Mordo. Just, you know, you know what? I can see we've got enough on Mordo. Uh, uh, I, I can see that we <laughs> should go and try to talk to this child. Uh, I, I sort of, I, I sort of just, Zox like right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm like turning right him at, as we move towards wherever. Morden. Yes, I've got it. Morden. <laughs> 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 I, I am desperately looking around for Thasmin. <laughs> Thasmin, you are in the kitchen. Yeah. I Well, I want to, if we can back up a little bit while this was all happening. Um, first of all, did she see anything? I can roll for the kitchen. Like, is there anything that seems out of place or unusual in the kitchen? Because I know we're on the other side of the wall from where the scorch mark was. So I just want to make sure that it's not like right here. You are essentially in a kitchen. You don't okay. even need to make a notice roll. It is the, it is the smells of fresh bread. It smells of a, of a woman who knows how to cook, who's okay. probably been cooking for this family for decades. Uh, there is nothing that you can tell that seems unusual in this room. Okay, I think once um, Sogrek and and Zok were led into the other room, and then the old lady followed them into the room. I think. Thasmin made like a quick, like she like peeked out this little, I think this is a door here, right? Cause I can see a little knob. Yep. I think she had peeked out that door and then she made like a beeline to go up the stairs before, while she was like not being watched. That's perfect. So she's upstairs now. So I, and that's why it's hilarious to me that they keep going, Let, let's go upstairs. Let's all go upstairs together. <laughs> like, like, let's just go up to the stairs. Like, like, yeah. So I think, I think, but she doesn't know that's happening. Perfect. I, I think she definitely hears a faint bit of, of Zoc like berating the guy early on. And she's like, we made a good choice. And then she keeps, <laughs> she goes, she does. She has upstairs. That's perfect. And and she manages to miss. There's a, a humorous moment of of missing Mother Kilcarney as she yeah. goes through with the shaking tray. That's yeah, when perfect. you said she was going to the kitchen for a tray, I'm like, oh no. Did oh, I, no. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that like I managed to time it. Like we got you. It's perfect. I love it. Yeah. Um, so ostensibly we're ending up sort of on the second floor. So I've already placed you here. This these are the stairs. So you're welcome to move where you think. You might be at this point. I know uh, Sunny has been not quietly climbing. <laughs> yeah, where where's where's a window entrance? Is that so the there? windows are kind of here and mm -hmm. here. This is that right. Like the floor plan is the same. All right. So you this is if you started right where the tracks are, sort of. They're kind of coming out from there. There's a couple windows here. Since I'm not since I since I failed the stealth check gonna put myself here <laughs> where's my i'm trying to do like the little hover bit yeah okay i got you uh let me make sure i get the right one boop yeah. so you just kind of appear I'm... in this bedroom suddenly yep i love it i failed my stealth roll <laughs> you sure did <laughs> so, so I want to have that be the I, I, like rather than rather than him being like overtly noisy on the climb up. It's it's not that he was super noisy or anything. It's just he happened to pick the room a person was in. Yep, it's it's, it's it makes good sense. Um, and Thasman is probably coming up at about the same time. So where would you like to be? I think I think she would probably be at the door. Like she was about to try to like peek in and sneak in and sneak right. in what was in here, and then whatever happens happens now. Right, and uh, and th you come up, <laughs> you come through this window, which was unlocked. Uh, so you just easily push it open, Sunny, and you come kind of tumbling through, and uh, you hear a small bark, and uh, and you kind of look over. And there is a boy and a small boy and a small dog sitting on the edge of his bed. And they're both just looking at you. Uh, Hello. Hello there. Hi. Uh, <laughs> hi. And my hands go up. Hi. Oh, how are you? Uh, surprise. How are you? Doubly so. Oh, mm. Don't mean any harm. All but, right. And he's actually it's... just going to sit. <laughs> oh, I love that. 
<laughs> okay. Put his hands in his lap. I, uh... That's a Benny for that, for sure. <laughs> you might hear my mates downstairs asking your folks a couple of questions. Um, mayhaps you'd be willing to answer a few questions of your own and then I'll get out of your hair? Uh, did... Did Mother Kilkarni send you up here? In it's a weird speak- way to send you, but she she did feel bad that I got sent upstairs. Why'd, uh, why'd you get sent upstairs? Because cause Blink and I were being loud. Yeah. That's what kids are supposed to be. And Blink's do, like, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what kids and dogs are supposed to do, right? Be loud? I think so. Blink thinks so, too. Go say hi, Blink. And Blink comes over to you, and he's he's just a fuzzy brown guy. Uh, and uh, he's, you know, all the different dogs, but fuzzy. And um, very much. <laughs> and he comes over, and he's very friendly and, you know, wants to say hello to you and that kind of a thing. How are you, pup? Gives him give uh, gives Blink a little scritch behind the ears. Um, it's the best. So you were sent up here for being loud. Uh, is that all? Yeah. Well, I didn't. Uh, I I didn't break that dish that time. Uh, perish the thought. But, um. Yeah, my uh, my friends. Uh, when we came into town, we we uh, r- we ran across some creatures. They seem to be made of clay. I don't know about. I mean, I have. I don't know what you're talking about. All the only clay thing I have is this thing, and he reaches and he kind of points towards this thing that's small statue that's sitting right there on the dresser next to you. Hey, mind if I, uh, mind if I have a look at it? You have to be really careful. My mom brought that back and she's, my mom brought that back. I, uh, it's important to you, yeah? Because your mom gave it to you? Mm-hmm. And she was a lore master. She was so smart. Yeah. My mother was very smart, too. I can uh, I can understand being very fond of a, of a, of a mother that's smart. Teaches you a great many things. Mm-hmm. And Sonny's going to actually examine the... Uh, and, like, while he's examining the... Uh, the, the the like the figure why don't you tell me a bit more about your mom oh and he just uh, like you get the full description of and she had long blonde hair and she smelled a little bit like um cinnamon rolls and lilacs and all the time and uh she was uh she was she was smarter than dad and that used to make him kind of mad and but it was awesome my mom too. Yeah. Uh go ahead and make a oh. <sighs> what do you have? I don't really have much. Like I like in, in that regard. Yeah, you're gonna be in a uh, you could make a notice roll for this very okay. easily. Make a notice roll to plus two. Well, that's perfect. All right. Uh so it is a small statue uh, of a terracotta dog. Is it familiar in a way we, is, is it as Extremely. Fami- yeah. <laughs> Extremely. <sighs> I don't remember where she got that, but she gave it to me. Because I like dogs. <sighs> yeah. Like Blink. Blink's Indeed. Like, <laughs> like Blink. And... Mm-hmm. Oh, I like kind of while peering at the at the terracotta dog, uh, give him like be like just idly scratching Blink behind the ears. Blink at this point like leans his his puppy head down on your knee. 
and it's just there. That's He's in it to point. win it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't believe. I don't believe. My name is Sonny. What's your name? Thomas. Thomas. I swear to you that I'll keep this safe. However, I may have to have a friend of mine take a look at it. Is that all right? Uh, no. Maybe you could bring a friend here. Mayhaps. Mayhaps. And he, play, and he like, holds your hand out. Places the figure right back in his hand. Thank you. No, not a problem at all. Uh, you can bring all your friends up. We could, uh, I have jacks and a ball and we could, uh, we could go, uh, into the library. We're not supposed to go in the library, but we could go in the library. It's very, very it's kind accommodating. of boring because there's just books, but we're not supposed to go. So it's fun. Very accommodating and kind of you. Uh, Yes, I uh, do believe that I will send for my friends. I'll be back shortly. As that's happening, is this a good time for us to like come up the stairs? Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> while while perfect. that was happening, can I have been searching this other room? Because I feel like I, w- I wouldn't have just stood in the hallway for a no, long I, time. But I also think absolutely. that knowing there's a dog, I think she would have tried to sneak in the room because the dog might have smelled her or picked up on her presence. So yeah, I think she would have gone into this bedroom and I think uh, probably search this trunk. Sure. Uh, and make a notice roll, I suppose. Okay. Sure. I want that to be different roles, but that's really, that's really where we are right now. I could do thievery if you want. Oh, do a thievery roll. All right. Oh, oh my. Yeah, got yes. Time. Uh, you find in that trunk that you're standing at right now, in particular, a small box of um, jewelry, necklaces, a couple of rings, pretty, pretty nice jewelry. Does any of it look, not that I have like magical skills, but does it all just look like, like, like decorative jewelry or does it look like something that might have like some sort of like insignia or like, like, um, like that? On it would like, only be special rings. for the purposes of gold. Okay. I think she's going to leave that for now um, against her better Nate against her nature, because I think she's trying to be better about not just stealing random things uh-huh. because of the group she's been traveling with. But I think she like, she really struggles not to do it. And she <laughs> ends up leaving a piece behind and is like, nice. all right, but maybe if I can, maybe if I come back another time, at least I know where it's at. Yeah. Um, and then I think she would also just like, once that's, settled i think she would also maybe peek into this room because it's a strange weird room yes it is a strange weird room and that is um as we've heard described before the dad's very boring library and there are a lot of books and it is books are expensive so it is i mean there's a lot of money to be had in this one room but they are for all intents and purposes scholarly books Okay. I think she would still, uh, just to like check all the, the tabs for her. I, I'm trying not to know that I can see the map. And no, so I know. I know. I think she would like kind of run her hand along all the books to make sure it was not like a secret passageway somewhere that she could like pull out a book and unlock. Mm-hmm. Um, it is, it is tedious work. Uh, the nice thing is that you do notice that there is no dust anywhere. Mother Kilkarni is taking good care of this house, apparently. Um, I think she'll make a note of that. And again, she will resist the temptation to steal a book. So um, proud. Even like, I think she looks at books that like her friends might like. And then she's like, Aww. no, they won't. They won't. They'll be, if I steal a book, they'll be mad at me. So I, I, I. <laughs> Not need... really a gift for them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I think if there's time, I don't know how long, because she wasn't like, taking your time and so she's kind of like sneaking in as soon as she's like as soon as she's done with something she moves past it mm-hmm. um i think she would also go to mother kilkarni i think i'm assuming this is the other bedroom up here is uh, the like servant quarter maybe or something or 
Right, so we have kind of the bathroom there, right? And then the yeah. other small bedroom does appear to be uh, Mother Kilcarney's bedroom. And uh, it smells really heavily of, uh, like, roses. Okay. Uh, does it so, feel like it was it was intentionally like someone was trying to cover up a smell? Either that or the woman really, really loves the smell of roses. So in... Uh, I don't want to – we're dangerously in an area of over-describing a thing that's going to okay. lead you in a weird direction. <laughs> okay. So she really seems to love the smell of roses. It could be to cover something. She may have some kind of um, ailment that she doesn't want sure. people to smell. Uh, I, oh, I'm mostly, yeah. mostly wondering if, if that would lead Thasmin to then keep investigating, which it sounds like it does a little bit. So I think she would start like – tapping on the floor and like probably avoid the wall that leads to the kids room. Cause she knows that there's like a people, she knows someone's in that room, so she wouldn't want to draw attention to tapping on the wall. But I think like she would look for like a creaky floorboard or like, I don't, I didn't, I, if there is like a chest or any items in there, she would want to look in those things. Um, but that's what you she find to. tons of um, elderly woman clothing. Okay. Uh, and aprons and that kind of a thing. You do find, a bin of essentially dirty laundry. Um, so maybe that's part of what's being covered up there. Okay. Um, so you're going to take it all for so, because she knows that he loves dirty laundry and he <laughs> loves doing it. No, <laughs> his I, favorite thing. Yeah. Uh, for Zach. Nice. No, I think she, I think Thasmin kind of realizes she's hit a dead end and she assumes that whatever's going on is happening in that kid's room. Yes. And I think maybe like, maybe by the time she's heading out of this room is when the group is starting to head up. Upstairs. Everybody's tromping upstairs. Yeah. I, and um, like, um, Sonny's actually just going to slip out of the window, or at least try to. Um, okay. And, um, so as you does, begin, uh huh. Uh, before he does, uh, Thomas. Yes. It's not too. It's not too hard for you. Where is your mom now? Oh, she's not with us anymore. I see. I miss her. Yeah. I miss my mom, too. And he starts to kind of tear up. Hey. And he's going to, like, Sonny will actually, like, um, dig around in his pockets. And he's going to give a, a pull out a coin. It's not, like, actual legal tender. It's, like this coin that's made out of like kind of branches and they're all kind of like very tightly wound into like really intricate, not like intricate, not work. He's like, my mom made these and I've only got a few left. And she told me that if you run across people that remind you of yourself, you give them out. Yeah. And that way these knots, they tie you all together so that even if you think you're alone or you miss me, you're not alone because people that feel like you, they have one of these in a way they're close to you. May not mean much, but something. Like friends and family. Yeah. You got a new friend now, yeah? Oh, oh, it's for me. Yeah, of course. Oh. So, oh, but your mom gave it to you. I just, I, you like, have more, like I said, I've got, got one or two more. You have, okay. I don't want to take it if it's your only one. And I'll always keep one. But okay. What I'm saying is everybody that's got one of these and it's and it's and it's a significant number. You have a lot of friends. Now you do too. <gasps> and he's gonna sneak out of the window. And that is a great moment to take a little break if we can. All right. Yep, we will be right back, everybody. Stay tuned. <laughs> 